might sound ridiculous, but Zoe, who's six months old, and Josephine, who's nine months old, are already brilliant in the water. In fact, humans are born with the ability to swim. No one has taught these babies to swim underwater. What they're doing is totally instinctive, and it's helped out by something going on inside them called the mammalian dive reflex. You have this reflex too. And so do sea mammals, like these seals. They can stay underwater for an impressive 30 minutes. Humans, though, lose this reflex by the time we're six months old. But some extraordinary people train themselves to use their mammalian dive reflex into adulthood. Today's brilliant body belongs to George Miller, the six-time national freediving record holder. Freediving is swimming deep underwater while holding your breath without any breathing equipment. George's body can do this because she's trained for 11 years. So prepare to be amazed, but please leave this kind of diving to the experts. How long can you hold your breath for? I can hold my breath for a little bit over seven minutes. That is completely crazy. Do you think you could get me close to seven minutes? <laughs> Eventually, maybe not today, but we can definitely improve you. OK, fantastic. We're going to see how long you can hold your breath for. OK. This will give George an idea of how well Zand uses his lungs to breathe. You did one minute 27, which is amazing for the first time. Impressive, Zand. I'm quite pleased with myself about that. I think we can do better. Really? Yes. Freedivers learn how to use something that we call a three-part breath, a diaphragmatic breath. So if you put one hand on your tummy and one hand on your chest, the first part of the breath comes from the belly. And then the chest. And then just let it all fall out. So hold your breath. The trick is to use your diaphragm, the muscle under the lungs, to take in as much air as possible before you hold your breath. You did 2.17. Really? That's amazing. So that's almost a minute more. Yeah. So Zahn's got the breathing technique down. Now he needs to do it while freediving underwater. Now, safety is the most important thing, and I can only do this because I'm surrounded by professionals. So never, ever practice on your own, even in the bath. Before he goes underwater, Zand uses George's deep breathing technique. His mammalian dive reflex is triggered once his face touches the water. Lovely. <laughs> How long was I under for? But for that 30 seconds, I was like a seal. <laughs> Zand held his breath longer on land because when swimming in water, his muscles needed oxygen. But practice makes perfect. OK, here we go. Instinctively, Zand's body knows he's not breathing, so it prioritises sending blood to his brain and his heart. This allows him to swim even deeper. Amazing work, Zand. Dive two was a massive improvement. Seven metres down, 41 seconds. The most amazing thing about today is that what George has been able to show me is that my body is capable of doing things that I had no idea it could. And that's all thanks to the mammalian diving reflex. Stop whatever you're doing! I wasn't doing anything. I said stop! There's a new patient in the emergency department. Come on, let's but, go. But I... Being rushed into Sheffield Children's Hospital is 13-year-old Declan. Looks like he's done something to his leg, Mum. He was training, diving off a three-metre diving board and yeah. he's missed his footing. Declan is a gold medal winning diver. He was at the pool practising his hurdle jump on the three-metre diving board. A hurdle jump? Shouldn't he be practising that on an athletics track, not on a diving board? It's not that sort of hurdle, Zahn. It's a type of dive like this. Is that really Declan? Yes, it is. Wow! Declan is amazing. So how did he end up in hospital? Well, as Mum said, Declan lost his footing and slipped. The board hit him in the shin. Bad board. 
His leg was bruised, grazed and not the right shape. Ouch! Here to take a look at Declan is Dr Rob Cornford. We're going to organise for an X-ray of your leg, find out what the damage is to these bones, and then we'll know what we need to do next. All right. Declan is hoping the damage isn't too bad, as he's got a big diving competition in a few weeks. Hopefully I'll be all right by then. Fingers crossed, Declan. Dr Cornford takes a look at Declan's X-ray. What's the diagnosis, Doc? You can see this line here where the brain is broken and you can see that there's some quite sharp fragments which look like they're really pointing out quite a long way out of line from the rest of the bone. This is a really serious break. But the team have a plan. They put his leg in a temporary plaster cast to stop the bones moving, and then it's off for a CT scan. This will give a 3D image of his leg to help the doctors decide what to do next. Bottom line, you will need surgery. So with a plan of action, it's off to the ward for Declan to try and get some sleep. We'll catch up with him later to see how the surgery goes. Ouch. Can you guess who today's heroes are? Well, I'll give you a clue. They often use one of these. Are they professional hula hoopers? Um, no. Did you guess it? We're about to take over the job of today's hero, lifeboat crew member Keith. Keith is the boss on board the Southport lifeboat. He's one of 40,000 specially trained volunteers in the UK who save anyone in trouble at sea. Let's go, Keith. <laughs> this is not an easy job, but there are a few perks. I'm about three feet away from a dolphin. Whoa! Look at them there! Wow! <laughs> that is amazing. Unlike dolphins, humans aren't always great in water. Keith, what kind of medical emergencies do you get out here, then? Boating accidents, where the boats are sinking and, and capsizing. So it's hypothermia of anybody falling in. Hypothermia is a dangerous condition where someone's body temperature drops too low. It's a huge problem if someone's stuck in cold water. We get them on board as, as quickly as we can. We'll try and prevent the condition worsening, and then our main aim is to get them to emergency help as quickly as possible. To get ready for our challenge, we need some training on how to save a person in the water. The exercise starts with a dummy going overboard. This bit doesn't feel very doctorish, does it? No. From the moment someone is spotted in the water... Man overboard! Starboard side! Every crew member points to the casualty. So the idea is that we point so that we don't lose the casualty position. And I have to say, I've just lost it. Hang on, where is it? There. Okay. Concentrate, Zand. Keith then expertly manoeuvres the lifeboat so the casualty can be pulled on board, ready to treat any injury. Hello, can you hear me? It's the lifeboat. Finally, it's time to head back to shore. Hang on a minute. Where's Sand? <laughs> Man overboard! This is very embarrassing. Um, you have to hold on. <laughs> As you can tell, it's very easy to have an accident at sea. Sorry. The lifeboat crew have an absolutely vital job. It's time for us to head back to shore and take over as lifeboat crew. What's our challenge? Mini Zan's going to be marooned in his boat over the other side of the pond. What? Mini Zan is marooned? Chris, what will we do? We're going to use our training, Zand. We'll launch the lifeboat, navigate through the treacherous waters, pass between the buoy and the jagged rocks, and finally safely manoeuvre the lifeboat next to Mini Zand. But you! We're going to judge you on three things. We're going to have the safety of your boat and crew, the speed and the safety of the casualty. Chris, you're up first. I'm using a rigid inflatable bolt. It's the Helmatic Arctic 24... I just call mine Donna. What? Are you ready, Chris? Ready. Three, two, one, go. It's a good launch. Good speed. Ooh, excellent navigation through the dangerous waters. Nicely done. Old Minnie's arm probably doesn't even have a boating licence, you know. He hasn't been maintaining that boat. He's exactly like Zand. Cheeky. Right, he's approaching the casualty now. OK, slow down. Slow down now. Slow down. Slow! Bit of damage to the propellers there, I think. At least I could administer first aid while 
Perhaps someone else comes and rescues me. Let's see if you can do any better, Zant. Three, two, one, go. OK. Good launch, quickly away. Come on! He seems a little bit slower, perhaps, approaching the boy. Uh, where are you going, Zant? Oh, hang on, hang on. Come back! Watch out for those rocks. Here we go now. I'm on track. Don't worry, Mini Zand. I'm coming to get you. Not any time soon, by the looks of it. A good direction for the approach. Let's see how he manages the casualty. Wait, I'm almost there. You've hit him. Oops. And again. Rescued. Yes. It was only a bump. I think I've got this one in the bag. You need to think again. Keith, what's the verdict? Safety of the crew. Uh, Chris was slightly ahead there, and uh, hit, put the rocks on the far side. In the entire pond, there is only one rock. Secondly, safety of the casualty. Zand, you hit the knee, Zand. Well, I must have been quicker than you, Chris. Uh, Zand, unfortunately, you were slower, so I have to give it to Chris. Yes! In your face. <sighs> well, I may have won, Zand, but what we've mainly seen today is just how important and difficult the work of the lifeboats really is. And I think it's definitely best left the professionals. Keith, we're going to give you your hats back and you will definitely want these little boats because Minizand has planned his summer holiday next year in Southport. Might have to rescue him again. Right, I'm going to go and buy him some sunscreen. <whistles> Amazing people do lots of important jobs inside and outside hospitals that help to keep you safe. But what will happen when we have a go? I feel a bit silly. This is Operation Takeover. Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. They might save you if you're wearing one of these. And these. And some of these. <laughs> well, it's lucky I was wearing my swimming trunks today. Did you guess it? We're about to take over the job of today's hero, lifeguard Donna. Being a lifeguard isn't just about watching out for rule breakers like Zand, it's about saving lives. Donna's a lifeguard training manager, so she's an expert in spotting swimmers in trouble and giving medical attention for all sorts of injuries. Common things are nosebleeds, people that run down the side of the pool, slip over. We might have people that can't really swim very well, so we might have to do minor rescues. We might have some older swimmers that may have heart conditions. Here we go right from the very mundane to the life-threatening and serious. So we're going to be lifeguards later. What do we need to know? So a big one is communicating. We use the whistle. One short whistle blast gets the attention of a bather. Two short whistle blasts. I need to talk to another member of my lifeguard team, get their attention for something in the pool. And then three short whistle blasts. I might need to go in and do a rescue and I need to tell everybody that's where I'm going. Can I have a green whistle? If you like, yes. Well, thank goodness for that. Next tip, use a really high chair to get a brilliant view. The lifeguards are constantly watching the pool. We use scanning patterns as well, so we might do a side-to-side -side motion, they might do up and down the pool. They're constantly changing the way they're doing things to keep themselves aware. And finally, for more serious cases, use the really important rescue board to help get casualties out of the water safely. We're really worried more about spinal injury, so by having them on a board, we've got them supported and we can strap them so they don't move anymore. We're not going to make that injury any worse. The lifeguards secure the straps gently but tightly around the casualty to prevent causing more injury. Thanks, Donna. There's a lot to remember. We've seen how important the lifeguards are at keeping us safe while we're swimming and how they respond to emergencies. But how will Chris and I do when we're thrown in the deep end? Get it? Get it? It's time for us to take over as lifeguards. Our challenge is to spot if someone's in danger. Use the correct whistle signals to alert the other lifeguards to help. And use the rescue board to get a swimmer with a suspected spinal injury out of the water quickly and safely. Sean, have you got a handle on the different whistle signals? Go on, test me, test me. It's lunchtime. This could be embarrassing. With extra poolside lifeguards on hand to keep swimmers safe, Donna will be judging our every move and picking a winner. Chris, you're up first. Lifeguard Kieran is pretending to be an injured swimmer. Will Chris spot him? Oh. 
He got the right number of whistles on that one. Three whistles means he's on his way in. What are you doing now, Chris? So I almost strapped Sam to the board. Sam's just one of the lifeguards helping, not the patient. Sorry, Sam. Ah, oh, beginner's error, eh, Donna? Head strap's a little bit slow. Uh-oh, quicker, Chris. He's not doing too well at the moment. Oh, dear. You need a strong finish here, Chris. What do you think, Donna? These are a little bit on the loose side. A bit loose, really. A bit loose. These are really loose. Oh, really? Well, that's not good. Time to move aside, Chris, and watch how the master does it. Yeah, right. Your turn. Here comes our fake casualty. Have you seen him, Zand? Zand? Zand! Oh, oh, oh! Two whistles to get the other lifeguard's attention. He's spotted him, he's given the right signals. And another three to say he's on his way. He's run right past the board. Oh, Zand. That's not good. He's quickly got this chest strap on, and now he's going for the head strap. Really jerking those straps into place now. Whoa there, careful. Oh. This is going to be a tight contest. Time to see who came out on top. A few things from both of you. Chris, you started off really well. It all fell apart a little bit when you got the board in, though. And then when we lifted out, the straps were quite loose. But, Zan, it was a little bit the other way around for you. The guy was face down in the water for quite a while before you reacted. You ran right past the board and had to come back for it. But putting it in didn't go too badly. So, your verdict for today, guys? It's a draw. A draw? We were both equally amazing. Yes, or equally rubbish. We learned a lot today, but I would say that overall, Donna, it is best if we leave it to the expert. Zand, let's hand our whistles back. <laughs> Having a day out in the park or countryside is a brilliant way of getting some fresh air and chilling out. Especially when there's somewhere to swim! Woohoo! But pools and lakes can be dangerous. You could slip if you run on wet ground. Uh, not me. I always walk slowly and safely to the water's edge. Well, you could get into a tangle trying to change into your swimming trunks and fall over. Not if you've already come wearing your swimmers <laughs> under your clothes. Well, you could stub your toe on rocks getting into the water. Not if you use the jetty, Chris. Well, in that case, I needn't have worried. I'll just sit back and read my book. Yippee! Chris! 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 I think Zon's drowning. This looks like an injury alert. I'd better save him. If you see someone drowning, never jump in to rescue them. Go and get an adult. Once they've been rescued from the water, should you... A. Sing them a sea shanty. B. Give them the book Learn How to Swim. Or C. Check if they're breathing and, if they are, roll them on their side, tilt their head back and call 999. The correct answer is, of course, C. Check if they're breathing and, if they are, roll them on their side, tilt their head back and call 999. Let's see if this lot get it right. They've not had any advice and they're winging it. Are you ready? Yeah! Off you go! Temateo and Dami are both pretending that they've been rescued from a lake after they started drowning. Quick, guys, they need your help. She breathing? Yes, she's breathing. Checking she's breathing is a great start. I'll maybe try and start doing chest compressions. They know yeah, she's like breathing that. and they're still doing chest compressions, which isn't going to do any good at all. You want to put him on his side? Yeah. They put him on his side, which is good, but they didn't check anything first. How do you get water out of someone? They haven't worked out if he's breathing or not. Our teams didn't quite get this right. They had some good ideas. I put him into the rescue position. And a few dodgy ones. Mirabel, why did you start doing chest compression? Just so that she can at least get a bit of water out of her system. So you were trying to squeeze her out like a sponge. Time to show you how it should be done. So Chris, just been pulled out of the lake, but he's not responsive. Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. After you've checked he's unresponsive... Check that he's breathing. So I'm going to tilt his head back, his mouth open. To work out if someone's breathing, 
place your face close to theirs. Look, is their chest moving? Listen, can you hear them breathing? And feel, can you feel their breath on your face? And he is breathing, but he's not responsive. So the next thing I need to do is get him in a position which will keep his airway open. Get that arm up, this arm over here, this leg up, and roll him towards me. Most important bit is to tilt his head like that so that his airway is open. This also helps any water come out. And now I phone the ambulance. 999, give my location, say what's happened, say that I want an ambulance, and they'll be on their way. While you're waiting, keep checking the person is still breathing. Are you ready to have another go? Yeah! Off you go. So if you see someone who's been rescued from drowning and is unresponsive, check their breathing, and if they are, roll them onto their side, tilt their head back, and then call 999. He's breathing, but she isn't responding. If the person isn't breathing, the response is different. You must call 999 immediately and find an adult. Don't worry, Zara, I've got you. Oh, oh, I'm not drowning. I was waving to say hello. Oh, well, always better to be safe than sorry, I say. Ah.